That dress looks good on you. Oh, thank you. Did you want to go to afters and get ice cream? Ooh, I'd love to go. Wait, stop, Alicia. You're laughing some taller, right? Bro, come on. Remember last summer at my birthday party, I gave you ice cream. You like shit it all in your pants. Oh damn. No, you gotta stop. Like, no, it was like, it was everywhere. Like, it happens to everybody. Like, it's totally fine. But I should probably go get ice cream with you guys because I have a stronger stomach. Maybe we can find vegan options for you, so you're not like shitting everywhere. Like, I love you. Like, you're my friend. Like, I care about you. So the question is, when did you realize your supposed friend actually hated you? This is trending on Twitter. <laughs> I cannot play this game. I cannot play this game because the truth is, I never realize. I never realize until it's way too late. Until so many people have told me so many stories about this person. And I'm still in denial. Like, no, madam. This one, she rides for me. She does one, two, three. Like, it takes me so long to realize. That is my problem. And even when I realize, I'm like, no, let me just, I wanna, let me just, let me just see. Um, so I never realize until it's way too late and the person has hurt me so badly that i probably can just never speak to you ever again and that's how the friendship ends so ish yeah it's a problem um <laughs> people are sharing all kinds of stories in twitter people are sleeping with each other's boyfriends yay all of these things luckily i haven't had that version of things but i've had like that undercover man where someone secretly hates you and it's it's actually worse like rather just beat me up or sleep with my boyfriend then it's obvious then i know Mara, if you just secretly secretly undercover i hate that one hey guys so today we are continuing the series of when do you realize your best friend hates hated you or your best friend your friend hates you so this one is a continuation you can check out the part one i think i should make a playlist i don't know i'll try and see if i can make a playlist so that you guys you know see all the different stories people are sharing so for me i think i'm this kind of person that i, I love to give people benefit of doubt I will, I will keep giving you benefit out until your cup is full. And when I cut you off, it's, I'm off for good. That's the kind of person I am. And I love to see for myself. I don't take what somebody tells me about somebody off of, of, of face value. I love to see how you treat me by yourself. So, because I understand that in this life, some persons treat you differently from the way they treat others. So just because this person treated somebody bad does not mean I should just, you know, take their word for it. I don't know if you guys are getting my point. I love to see for myself. Yeah, and I love to give people second chances. I can give second chances as up to 100 times. Until when I'm done, I'm, I decide, okay, now nah, I think I'm done. Do you get? That does not mean I'll be, I'll be playing the fool. I don't know. I, I, I think I, I don't know if I'm putting it the best way I can, but that is the way I am. And when somebody hurts me, I'm careful the way I tell others, so that because I know that people, people that will that like me, when I tell them about somebody that hurts me, they might just take it the way just because they like me, they will take it and start fighting back on my behalf. So I'm usually very careful how I tell people about people that hurts me. That's the lesson I've learned, and so. I handle that with so much care. I don't know if, if that makes any, any, you know, if that makes any sense. Signs your friends are talking behind your back. They go out without you. Let's say you've got multiple people in a friend group. You're the only one not invited. They're posting pictures, they're posting videos, they're having fun and they're telling you about it as if it's okay for you to know. But they, plan that shit behind your back and they on purposely all decided to exclude you from it. They had a conversation about it. What they said, who the fuck knows? Just know that it was negative. That's why your ass was not invited. Number two, the energy is fucked up when you're around them. When everyone's in their little group, everyone's in the group setting, we're going out to eat, we're going to the beach, we're doing whatever the fuck it is. They are not looking at you the same. You can kind of tell when they look at each other, they know something. I can show, the, show you the look too. Give me a second. They looking at you and looking at their friends like that. <laughs> they were saying some shit behind your back and they're doing the you know, you know, look to each other. You know, you know. Number three, if they're explaining something to you in a group setting, like you're all talking about something, they on purposefully will leave out information about what is being said. And it's important key details in these stories that they leave out because everyone in the group knows about it. They just don't want you to know. So they'll purposely keep you in the dark by not giving the full detail. They'll put in a little truth. They'll give you just a little bit, but they won't give you all of it because you're not included in that conversation, nor were you included in that, that, that whole dynamic at all. Another one, another one. They ever talk loudly while one of their other friends is saying something? 
Like if they're explaining something, they automatically just start talking in another volume and they start talking really fast. They're trying to get them to stop where they're at because something about that that was said involved you and they don't want you to know. You got some friends like that? Call them motherfuckers out on their fucking bullshit, bro. Start a problem because they are doing it right in front of your face and that shit is not right. This particular um, aspect of, you know, being in a friend group and you're always the one that's been secluded or singled out. And you're not the only one, you know, you don't, you keep not getting invited to things. It's dicey, or should I say it's two-edged swords? <laughs> I don't know if, if that's the right word to use. See, what if you are this kind of person that just enjoys taking and taking and taking, you don't give to that particular group of friends? And everybody's tired of that character. Meanwhile, when you're telling all that, you tell them, oh, this this my friend group, they like singling me out. But you've not sat down to ask yourself, why are they doing that to me? You get, there's so many things to check. Could it be that we don't have aligned values? Could it be that, oh, I keep taking and not giving back and they're tired? Or could it be that I'm too matured for that kind of group? Or could it be that I've outgrown them, I've leveled up on that, you know, they're still down there? Could it be that? Could it be why that single me out? There's a whole lot to check. Or could it be that? Just yeah. Could it be that um, you you guys don't have aligned values? They like gossiping, and you don't like gossip. And each time they're gossiping, you don't like it, and you call them out on it, and they don't like you for that. So in other words, they will not like to stay around you. So I think it's high time for you to also evaluate yourself and ask yourself some hard questions. Maybe it's high time you left that group of friends and found yourself a new friend. A new new friendship. I know it's it's hard, but there are some things that we need to start telling ourselves. There are some hard truths that we can only tell ourselves. So that's why I say this particular one is very very dicey. Yeah, there are some friends that you actually outgrow. I've outgrown some friends, and I've told myself I'm the type that tell myself the truth. I don't lie to myself. That's it. That's the best gift I give myself. I do not lie to myself. There are some things I know that I will never do, and I don't do. So when I meet new people. And I discovered that they're like friend, that. They are doing. And someone compliments like you. That way. I and they're the first ones to say equation. something it's very completely simple. opposite like, of the compliment. It's very I'll do an example. But if you're the type that, that dress looks so you like friendship so much. Oh, I have the same idea. dress. My idea. Or you have a whole. Oh, I love your hair. It looks so, so nice. How'd you nice. get it curly like that? Y'all ever been friends with somebody who low key don't like you? Like you know deep down they move on funny. I have like so many friends who've been like low key haters, and these are the things that they typically do. When they don't like you like that. I think the first one for me is always going to be them backhanded compliments. People who are haters, they will find any way to insult you, take a jab at you, hurt your feelings, and then laugh it off like it's a joke. Like, but for, be for real. Like, they'll try to make you feel like you're not that girl. Like, you just mad basic, mad blah. And it's just like, you're supposed to be my friend. You're supposed to be gassing each other up. Why, why are you hating for us? Like, the next time for me is when they don't invite you out to places. Like, they purposely leave you out and exclude you from, like, everything. They'll invite everybody out to a little social gathering. They will purposely exclude you. It, they make it like a life mission to exclude you from things and to make you feel left out. The third one for me is going to be something I like to call energy vampires. They will suck the living daylights out of you when it comes to asking you for help. They basically like use you. They use you for everything, but when you ask them, you know, to reciprocate, oh, they're gone. You cannot find them. They pull a Houdini. Adios. In my personal opinion, a friendship should be mutual. It shouldn't be one person just taking, 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 and one person just giving, giving, giving. We should equally pour and take out of each other. Y'all make sure you're not friends with no hater. Like, that's not cute. You don't need them in your life. You're not nobody's fan. You're not, they're not a celebrity. You're not chasing up behind them. Just get rid of them and keep pushing. So if you have these friendships in your life that you feel like just don't make you feel good and also be very specific to what energy they're bringing, even if it's not about you, if they're talking bad about people all the time, always complaining, like that affects your frequency yeah. and your energy and just think about how to reposition and maybe not spend all your time with this person. doesn't have to be like, I'm done. Yeah, You're cut off. Turkey. Right. Just think about the nice pie. Yes. Think about your nice pie and who you want to give those slices to. Your energy pie, your nice pie. Yeah. It's and then if they're not it, bye. Bye. <laughs> Three signs that your friend does not like you, part two. Coming in at number one, they always come to you with negative news. So I've been seeing videos everywhere on how to tell if a friend doesn't like you. And everyone's teaching these videos. They're giving you like five reasons why and five steps why. And I know 
It's really hard because there aren't really books on female friendships and the female breakup, and I think they're much more difficult than uh, relationships with men. But what I've learned this year, it took me till this year to learn it, is that your body doesn't lie. Energy does not lie. If your friend doesn't like you, your body will tell you before she tells you, before she shows you any sign. Your body probably will tell you within the first two or three times you guys hang out. So I'll give you an example. If you pay close attention, your body will tell you if your friend hates you or even if you hate that friend. And I want to preface this by saying that it does not mean that they're good people and you're bad people or you're a bad person, they're good people. Sometimes they're not even energy vampires. Your, your energy just does not mix. So for me, what I've noticed with friends that I've let go and I look back on is that before I go hang out with them, before I pick up the phone and call them or when they're calling me, my body will tense up. I will literally have rings. Like my body will start ringing back and forth, back and forth down my neck. And we'll go hang out. We might have a lot of fun. We actually do always usually have a lot of fun because I have a big personality. But then when I get home, I will be so exhausted. I will be so drained. Like I would need a lot of time to catch up on sleep. And I could imagine that vice versa, sometimes my energy will drain someone. So for me, I start to gauge it. Like if a friend shows up to my house and they're like, you can just see they're sitting in a corner, they look uncomfortable. They would never be invited again. If I have to sage after you leave, you will never be invited again. If I felt like the energy was just off, it's you just your body will tell you. So I'm gonna give you guys an example. I was at an event recently, and I met this young lady. Not young. She was like older than me, actually. I'm trying to do a smoky eye, and um, everything was going well. And then two young girls sat next to us, and these two young girls just moved from Hawaii or something, and uh, they had never tried seafood, and they wanted to try seafood. For the first time ever so i was like walking them through the dishes and everything and i could just tell like we got along so well they fell in love with me I fell in love with them we were like they were like oh my god you're like a, a big auntie we want to call you and we just kept talking like it was everything was flowing so well i picked up on the power struggle right away because she was just like contradicting everything i said i could be like oh my god yes just have this sea bass and she was like it's pronounced sea balls like i don't know and she did this for like an hour straight and I was like, oh, okay, this is weird. She she wants the power in this dynamic, in this moment. And I mean, naturally, it's not even like I'm sick in the power. It would just happen to me if I'm in the presence of a bunch of people. Like, I command attention very easily. And so I kept quiet for the rest of the evening. Anyway, at the end of the evening, she asked for my number. I was like, oh my God, you're so cool. You're so powerful. Um... I would love to hang out with you and get to know you better. Well, I want to grab lunch. And I was thinking in my head, is this girl okay? She just spent the whole entire evening trying to dominate me. And then at the end, and I know she didn't realize she was doing it. So she's not a bad person. She didn't realize she was doing it. A year ago, I would have not listened to my body. I would have... The Fenty Beauty is so good. I would have uh, gone on a friendly date with this young woman with this woman but now i just listened to my body my body said no absolutely not and i just said oh my god i'll be right here i'll go to this bathroom and i left why am i going to start a friendship with someone who immediately our energy is clashing immediately my body is saying absolutely not so just listen to your body these are the two signs really it's really easy it will save you a lot of headache if you listen to your body sign number one your body will tense up on the way to hang out with them, on the way to meet up with them. If you're about to initiate a phone call, your body will tense up. Your neck will feel tight. Everyone has a God-given intuition. If we just listen to it, your neck will feel tight. Sign number two, when you're done walking, hanging out with them, you will feel depleted. You will feel like you just ran a mile. If you guys just, even if you just sat and did nothing, you could be watching television together. The moment they, are, they say goodbye, you say goodbye, you will be like... I need three days to catch up. I mean, I'm already like that naturally, but I would especially feel like that. Like, oh my God, I need to take a nap immediately. I need to t I need to go home and relax. I need to go get a massage. I need to go, like, I would feel the need to de-stress. 
So here's what I'm saying about this. I don't know about your body, like people's body reacting to, you know, your body giving you signs. But what I've come to also realize in life is your intuition will never lie to your lead you astray. So you need to, you know, hone it and listen to it. When you keep tuning it, tune it, it will lead you to the right path. Beyond friendship, every decision you are making in life. So, you know, friendship, friendship decisions are even life it's it's it can either make or mar you because the environment you find yourself in or, or you constantly put yourself in it will all it will affect you in life so your intuition is something you need to build and like i keep saying on this on this channel if you're a christian you should rely heavily on the holy spirit and if you are not learn to build your intuition it will help you a lot to discern who to hang around with and who not to hang around with and don't be stubborn about it do not be stubborn about it don't say oh this is the way i am ah, I, I i need people like this in my life no help yourself nobody is coming to save you you are your best bet in life yes you want to know how someone feels about you meet their boyfriend meet their boyfriend <laughs> men don't know how to be fake I've seen a lot of content on this app about friendship red flags but one thing we don't talk about is people who love you and hate you at the same damn time as someone who just ended a very very long friendship with someone and it took me like 10 million red flags i just couldn't figure her out because she genuinely seemed to love me she did actions that were very loving um she acted very loving towards me but it, she was just so shady the entire time and like other people could see the shadiness but i couldn't because i just felt the love because i assumed like if i love you you love me like i just read it all wrong and it was interesting because other people could see it but i couldn't and also i don't walk around thinking everybody's jealous of me so i'm not one of those people who just thinks like automatically that someone is jealous so it takes me a long time to to realize these really really dangerous red flags that are covered in a whole bunch of green flags these people are really dangerous because it will take you a long time to spot it if you're like not wise you know and i think i'm one of those people that it takes me a while to read red flag because i just always assume everyone has good intentions and like we're all here love light positivity like i really am that type of person and i assume everybody else is that way and that is very very dangerous so those of you who are quick on it good for you and those of us who are not like myself we really need to learn to like not do the pros and cons of someone of oh but she did this and this and this no if there are wrong intentions if the vibe is just off trust that don't like list out all the good things that they ever did for you like i did when did you realize your friend secretly hated you didn't show up for send flowers or simply come hug me when my mom died oh that's sad that's sad she would take and send unflattering pictures of me randomly even after i expressed i don't like pictures taken of me take and sit, 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 I sit, I sit, <laughs> sit. <laughs> made fun of me including my insecurities in front of men when we were hanging oh. out with and then when oh. i confronted her about it she said you mean to tell me you don't show out for dudes? I love this this scenario here. It's a date, and you finally met your homie's new partner. Right. The jokes are getting <laughs> run. The jokes are getting run. Yep. This is the craziest one, yeah? When she asked me to bring weed to Indonesia, and I told her no. Huh? I told her no. So she stuck in my bag. And then I found out when I got there, if you bring weed, there's a death penalty. <laughs> sure, there's a kiki. <laughs> Has to be a little joke. Your nah. friend hates you. Nah, yeah, that's no, that's, 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 that's a friend. That's, that's, that's attempted sure. murder. Goodness me. That's a terrible friend. I'm sorry, but pay attention to the people that only call you to vent about their problems. And what I mean by that is if somebody is genuinely only calling you when they have issues going on in their life or just problems that they need advice on, not only is this a trauma bond, but they are essentially only calling you to tell you what they have going on. And then ask yourself the question, have they ever just called me to check up on me? Have they ever just called me to ask me what's going on in my life? Have they ever called me to get updates on my life? Have they even texted me? Something so simple. And if the answer is no, you have to ask yourself if this was really ever your friend. The relationship is not serving you. And I feel like we all have that moment when we sit back and we ask ourselves, yeah, we're not okay with these things. We're not content with how this relationship is going. But was this relationship ever really different? Did they ever actually put in the effort to check up on us did they ever actually put in the effort to see how we were doing and if the answer is no this was never a friendship this happens so often because a lot of people confuse like genuine friendships with trauma bonds i think it is completely normal to be there for people when they're going through things that's what friends do but that is supposed to be energy that is reciprocated right and not saying that this one friend going through a tough time and you're not going through a tough time means that you need to expect them to be there for you the same way they'll be there for them sometimes you're going to be pouring into somebody that needs a lot of pouring right they need to build themselves back up however comma if they do not switch the roles and look out for you when you're in the same position that's not your friend it's just not you're their therapist
Another thing we also need to understand is that you cannot pour from an empty cup. You cannot give what you do not have. There are people that they are very compassionate, they are very empathetic towards others. They know how to say the right things. There are others that as friends, they just need you to be present. That's all they need. But just the way we have been advised to you know, love people the way they want to be loved, you, we should also learn how to be friends to people the way they want to be friends. They want, they want to be treated. It's, it's not easy, but that, those are things that we need to build ourselves in. You know, just the way, just the way, you know, we have been encouraged to learn how to be emotionally intelligent. So that's how, this is where emotional, em, your emotional intelligence will help you. You need to learn how to treat people, whether they're your friends, they're your, you know, your colleagues, your partners in, in business, in anything. Your emotional intelligence will help you a lot in, you know, in managing them, in relating with them the best way possible. The way you treat A or you relate to A is not the same way you should relate to B or C. I don't know if you guys are getting my point. And you, I hate when people say, this is the way I am. You have to take me on. So, yeah, we need to unlearn all those habits of constantly say, oh, that is the way I am. Um, 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 what's, what's this, all this Zodiac sign thing? People should stop using that to lie or living, or living behind that, you know, misbehaving in the name of Zodiac sign. I do not believe in that. Please don't, don't do that to people. Treat people the way you, you want yourself to be treated. Yes. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye.